Hello and welcome to today's video. Now I thought I'd try something a little different today as I've not been able to get out much this month at all to do any photography or any filmmaking. So I thought what I'd do is I'd bring you to work with me and maybe we can uh, squeeze in a bit of photography along the way. Now I'm quite fortunate that my job takes me to all parts of the country on a daily basis and today's no different. So I've set myself a challenge, three locations, one hour in each over a three day period. So stick around for the next 15 minutes or so and let's see what we can get. for the sound right now it is very very loud and if I turn around you'll see why look at all that going on over there so I'll do my do my best to sh <laughs> shelter the uh, shelter the sound so yeah for the first image here I've, I've, I've brought myself up right up underneath this overhang here overlooking the waterfall now the idea is is to get some of these um, uh, trees and stuff that are just dangling down just in front of all of that waterfall that's going on behind it. Now, again, as usual, I've picked myself the darkest point in the scene, uh, shooting into the whitest part of the scene. So I'm getting a bit of a, a problem with the lights and the darks, as so often is the case when I uh, come to these sorts of places. But what I've ended up doing if I turn you around and show you the camera. I've tucked myself up, as you can see, right up close uh, to uh, the rocks and stuff here, because I kind of want to get all this here, just to give some sort of frame, some sort of leading line into the waterfall in behind. And you've got all this lovely uh, green just hanging down in front of it. But as you can tell, all this along here is blowing out. I mean, it's blowing out on this camera and it's also blowing out on the Sony as well. But I want to sort of like highlight all this going on in the right hand corner and all this beautiful texture in the rocks. So as you can see up there, it's really sort of blowing out. So that's where I've had to put in a bracket. So I put on the bracket, I've done a five image uh, stack. Um, basically, I don't want to lose any of the detail of the, of the waterfall coming over. So again, I've been playing around with the settings but I think a five image stack is the way to go on this one and here's the image. sequence of images I've basically taken a number around this area trying to make use of all these stones and all this sort of foliage and stuff trying to sort of like get a, 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 a break between the, the white of the waterfall and the darkness and what had to go in on the details in the rocks. In my mind it's working but I don't think it's working in the images you'll probably see in the images that I've put up shortly but yeah we're here to learn aren't we so um I what i've probably got to do is just move myself around a little bit and see if i can find a few more compositions uh, just to wait back to try and get away from some of this noise it's so flipping loud I don't bring my camera out when it's wet or rainy or misty or there's any water in the same postcode as me because Sony just does not like it. The weather um, sealant or whatever it is, is just absolute pants and it just kicks off this error all the time. It's always ever done it and I think it's a bit of a normal thing with Sony. So come on Sony, sort yourself out. 
Okay, well, I hope you can hear me a bit better now. Um, I've just been working my way just down through underneath here, but I can't really find anything because of um, you know, the shutter times and stuff like that, all the foliage and everything that's moving, so I can't get the shot that I want. You know, some sort of silhouettes against the white of all that beautiful white water coming over uh, the waterfall. So what I thought I'd do is I'll set myself up towards the back here with a 24 mil lens on, which will just make everything look so much bigger and so much further away. Uh, uh, what I've done is rather than doing any sort of focus stack or anything like that, again, I want to keep the shutter up just so I try and get as sharp as image as possible. Uh, at the moment, I've got um, an ISO 200. Now, I've been playing around with 800 ISO and what have you at the moment, so I'm not quite sure what's going to come of this. But um, what I thought would be quite a, a, a good thing to do is actually just to focus on the um, waterfall. Uh, and once that's in, in focus, right there, all this running here will all go out of focus at some point and just go soft and so will all the edges. But the idea is, is that when I balance the colours and stuff back in Photoshop, we'll get a nice sort of highlight up here just above the, the waterfall and all this will gradually go off into all that lovely darkness that you can see there. Um, that's the plan anyway. Uh, it's always good to have a plan. And uh, if it's worked out, is the image. It's amazing how quickly everything's changed here. The, the rain's picked up a lot more, but I couldn't believe how much water is now coming over. Now I'm coming over that waterfall. Um, I am stood by this little bridge here, which I was going to go down onto the uh, lower side of the bridge, which is the shot I was kind of come up for, really. Um, but I'm so glad I didn't because down there, it's all overtaken with the water and the, the path to get there has all just gone over as well. So. I'm going to start getting all my stuff together and uh, try and find somewhere else to go, I think, at the minute, because uh, it's all changing rather quickly. Well, I soon realised my hour was up and it was time to get back to work, feeling rather soggy. Tuesday takes me to Sheffield, and Sheffield's not too far away from one of my favourite autumn locations. After yesterday's washout, we're trying again. Uh, I've got to head to uh, Sheffield, uh, and once I finish there, it's a hop, skip, and a jump then to a place called Wyming Brook, which is just on the outskirts of Sheffield. Now it has been um, it has been shut for a long, long, long time. Um, I know that it's back open again because I went with the children down there for a walk a couple of weeks ago. Um, it is back open again, but I think it has been shut down again because of the access at the bottom. Um, there, there, I don't know if you, if you don't know Wyoming Brook, there are a number of uh, footbridges that cross backwards and forwards uh, across the brook itself. And I know because it's been going through a facelift over the past sort of 18 months uh, that they are um, going to be replacing those bridges. And I think they were doing that over the past couple of weeks. So it'll be interesting to see whether they've done that or not. I know there's a huge amount of destruction through the winter that we had or well, well, last winter or the winter before we had some very high winds um, and I was surprised to see the devastation of the trees that had fallen down uh, since I was there ooh, two years ago. I did make a video from there about two years ago or so. So yeah it has changed quite a bit. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what we can get. Uh, hopefully we get some better images than we did yesterday because I must admit I was not happy with the uh, images that um, I made yesterday. Um, I just thought they were very clunky, um, not very well composed. Um, obviously I was battling against the, the, the weather as well and the fault that appears on my camera, which is, it just, it just takes you out of it. It's, it's, it's not, a good, uh, not a good thing to go through. But anyway, let's see what we can get today.
Well, here we are in Wyoming Brook. Now, I'm just sort of just gradually walking my way down the actual brook, but you can see the utter devastation up here. Uh, that was probably last winter, the winter before, all that going on there, uh, right the way down where all this used to be under full canopy. And this place is absolutely fantastic if you were to come here in the autumn because the colours are just astounding up down through here. But um, yeah, you can see this, it's all very look, it's all very open. Um, so uh, kind of a, I don't know if that's good, that's good or bad, at least your pictures aren't going to be quite so dark. But if you look over my shoulder down through here, you can see the, the devastation that goes on there. You've got all the broken branches and you've got all the, the damage and stuff all being collected by the water and it's obviously coming up against the rocks and staying there. So that's going to make all the images that I try to get, it, it's going to be very messy. So I'm going to have to try and change my way of thinking actually, rather than going for the the bog standard shots that you would normally go for, sort of the wider sort of vistas or whatever, to try and sort of you know, bring out the best in um, the woodland. I don't think the woodland's gonna let us do that. So it's gonna be interesting. So what I'm trying to do, what I'm doing now is I'm narrowing my search down or narrowing my thought process and my eye line to maybe something that's a little bit smaller that you can sort of kind of move everything out to the side. But again, we can use the tools that we've got, sort of depth of field, things like that, just to try and move things around to where, where we want them. Well, it sounds good anyway. <laughs> This isn't dodgy at all. Um, I'll show you in a minute how I'm perched on here. Um, but this tree just behind me is uh, kind of standing out to me as I was walking down through the path. But you see there's a lot of rubbish in behind it, um, which I don't particularly want in the shot. So I'm kind of sort of very Tetris style, trying to sort of place things into the shot. And that's why I'm precariously out on a limb here, very dodgily standing on the corner of the boulders uh, and I'm just basically going to try and make use of this rock and uh, the stump just to sort of like hide everything that's in behind here just kind of hide it and just I mean the, the I'm just trying to work out what's the subject I usually try and keep a subject in I mean the the, the tree in this instant is going to be complementary to the shot and I think the focus is going to be the texture on the log and the what light there is coming through the ferns on the left-hand side, and you've got all this beautiful coloration in, in the boulder in front. So I think that's gonna be our subject, and the tree in this is gonna be complementary, but what I don't want is all the rubbish because that doesn't complement anything. So that's how I framed the shot, but I'll just show you how I'm, how I'm perched. See, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even on a flat rock there, it's just the, uh, the pin on the bottom of my tripod just kind of clinging on there for a minute and obviously I've got this very slippery boulder, uh, very slippery rock, and it's all being perched on there, basically to try and get this shot over here. Now, as you can see, what I was saying, you've got the, the tree going up in the middle, which is gonna lend some complementary sort of atmosphere to the photo. You've got the boulder here, which has uh, got lots of lovely color on it, and you've got what sunshine there is coming through the uh, ferns here and the texture on the stump. So that's the shot. I'm still going to play around because I know there's a better shot here somewhere. Let's go and have a look for it. Well, I must admit to being a little disappointed with this image. Uh, the ferns, which I'd hoped would be more prominent in the image, they didn't show up at all and were lost in the background. But the complimentary tree was OK. Uh, the rocks and the bark in the foreground on the stump, not so bad. But there's more to find. Okay, so just sort of turning my attention now to sort of like narrow my field of view down. And I've just saw these, uh, these ferns here, here in the darkness of this boulder. Now you can see there's, there is one that's light and one dark. I like the, I like the pattern of the dark one. Um, I have taken a picture of both of them together, which you'll see in a minute. But also I've just taken a picture of the one that's just curling over on the left. I just like the way it's very, it's set against the very dark background. I haven't bothered with trying to focus stack or anything like that. I quite like sort of like the edges as just to give you that feeling of depth with the fern 
of the leaves can go into sort of, um, the focus can drop off a little bit on the back of them. And that kind of leads it into the darkness. Probably be a square crop, that's what I'm thinking at the moment, but until I see how the, the, the picture's balanced on the, a larger screen, that's what we've got. But I just like, I just like the, the contrast between the two. Well, as I look around, the devastation further down the, the brook is quite uh, quite apparent, as you can see all over on the backside, uh, and all the logs and stuff are, have all been felled and just left. Now, apparently there was a case of um, elm disease or beech trees have, have got some sort of disease or something, and so they were all felled and then they're just left for the natural habitat, which I kind of guess is a good, good thing, but uh, I know it still looks messy. <laughs> but anyway. I managed to find this tree that's still standing and uh, let me talk you through this one. Well, as you can see, you've got that beautiful canopy up there. Although it's not a particularly sunny day, you've got all the bright light coming through there anyway. And if I bring you down to the actual back of the camera, that's kind of what we're looking at there. Um, I just, yeah, just, again, it's just making a feature of the, um, the, 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 the trunk that's coming in here and that lovely sort of like, uh, I'm assuming is it granite? I don't know. Uh, you've got that lovely big boulder there. Just standing off the off the main main um, pathway up through the brook. Now I was going to try and include some of this on this side as well, but there's a lovely nasty piece of uh, sky just up through there, which uh, doesn't really uh, come through on the camera too well. So um, yeah, that's what we've got. Um, I think it should be okay. Let's just take that. Let's try and take this reflection off that. Yeah, so that's kind of the reflection. That's kind of the image that we've uh, settled for, just there. Well, that hour evaporated pretty quickly, so it's time to pack up my gear and head back to the car. Quite satisfied with the images that I'd made today. Wednesday finds me in Lincolnshire. But time really isn't on my side today, so I had to make a quick stop at this beautiful field. Day three, I think it is now. Um, I've got about 20 minutes, that's all I can spare today. Um, and so uh, as I was driving by, I saw this beautiful field uh, with that tree over in the, the background. I'm gonna hopefully try and make something of that tree, but where I am, I'm in the dip and the tree is kind of high up and it's kind of getting lost with the, the background over there. But at the moment, uh, there are a few um, poppies and stuff just dotted about the place. So. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make uh, use of that. There's some lots of gray clouds around, so it could be quite dramatic. I'm not sure whether at the moment I'm gonna include any of the uh, clouds or not. Uh, I might do when it comes to the tree, possibly. I don't know yet, but it's beautifully, lovely, lovely dark, dark red tree. 
over there. So yeah, it's uh, again, I've got 20 minutes to try and find something and put it together. So yeah, uh, I've taken a couple of shots already, uh, including the uh, poppies and stuff. But because there's a gusting wind, although it doesn't look like it, there is quite a lot of sort of surface wind and it's gusting through and it's trying to get the, the poppies so that they are uh, in, basically trying to get them sharp. And it's uh, more, more difficult than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. So I've tried various shallow depths of field, um, messing around with the um, ISO at the moment, just to give me a, a shot speed. I need least, at least to try and get it to at least a, a thousand, really, uh, just to sort of try and freeze it and try and pick up on the detail. I'm not quite sure whether it's working at the moment, but <laughs> we'll see in a minute. So you might have some pictures in a minute, you might not. Let's have a look. <laughs> Well, that's it. We've ended on a nice day. Um, bit of a change from uh, all the water that was a bit of a washout at the beginning of the week. But uh, hopefully you've had a, uh, it's been a bit, little bit interesting of the, some of the places that we've uh, been able to see. So um, yeah, it's been nice having you along. So um, if you'd like to leave a like and subscribe, there are uh, links, affiliate links um, in the description below. Um, if you're interested in any of the gear that I use, um, if you purchase anything through those links, then we get a bit of a kickback and that helps support the channel. Uh, might give me a, a few gallons of petrol to get out and make more of these uh, these videos so obviously we're nowhere near um being monetized or anything like that uh but that's not uh, you know overly important but if you'd like to leave a like and subscribe and show your appreciation for the work that goes into these things much appreciated and until next time i'll see you then bye bye <laughs>